Cry to a channel of light fluid. Here we go with the last of the new VNs for the month. Remember the flowers. It's something quite a few people have asked me to do, and I played some of the early builds. I'm a little behind on it, but I enjoyed it, so I figured it was a good one to do, and I hope you enjoy it. I don't have too much to say in the intro here, so let's get right into the story. Yeah, he's losing a lot of blood. Are you sure it's a good idea to leave him? Of course not, we can't get back to the in vehicle while all these guards are around. Okay, I'll be fine, we'll just keep him covered. Oh, hey, help me move those crates. I feel like I'm slipping in and out of consciousness. Where am I? Why can't I open my eyes? Yeah, don't worry, you'll be okay. Who? Shh, just rest, we'll be back soon. I can feel him lift my head and wrap something tight around it, before placing something soft between me and the wall behind me. I have to do for first aid. Okay, let's move out. Right. Wait, where are you going? Where? Something hard hits my forehead, causing me to jerk my head up. If my lectures are so boring, feel free to leave. I look at my desk. He threw a chalk stick at me. We're on the third row of the lecture hall, too. I don't know if I should be impressed or annoyed. Maybe a little bit of both. Sorry, sir, I must have dozed off. I don't need you to tell me that. As a doctor, I'd hope not. I met him to myself. What was that? Uh, nothing, nothing. And with that, my professor scoffs and turns back to the board, pulling a new stick of chalk from a box. What a geezer. Chapter 1. Freedom. I pick up the bit he threw at me. If I had some more confidence in my aim, I'd throw it right back at him. Hey, I know what you're thinking. I turn to my right to, Di to Diana. You always seem to. It's not worth it. I know, but... You can get back to him by proving yourself on the upcoming test. Yeah, I forgot about that. The past few nights have been kind of a blur on account of... Were you up practising again? Maybe. Diana sighs at that, which I grimace. You know, you've really nailed your impression of my mom. Well, what do you expect? You stay up all night every night. Who wouldn't be concerned about that? I know, I know. She's right as much as I don't want to admit it. Sorry, I'm still adjusting this new program. I'm trying to figure out how to weave in my own personal projects. Diana pauses before placing an arm on my shoulder. No, don't be sorry. I shouldn't be nagging you, at least not this much. I laugh. No, I kind of appreciate it. It shows you care. Well, I'm glad that's coming through. I've always been a bit worried about you. You and me both. At the very least, you seem to be absorbing all the information being thrown at you. It's almost unfair how well you do on the exams with how little you study. It's all thanks to you. You've helped me a lot with figuring out my study habits. Oh, clearly not enough. How much sleep did you get last night? Irrelevant. I'm sure. I tried to yawn discreetly into my hand, but I guess it wasn't discreet enough as our professor whips around and zeroes in on us. I can feel Diana's arm tense upon my shoulder as we got caught doing something promiscuous. Something I should be aware of, made aware of, you two? Well, Diana stands up. Oh, well, you see, 
He was just helping me understand the new material about the frontal cortex. I was having trouble wrapping my head around it. She's trying to play it off. Oh, is that so? Diana, I expected better from you. And to not associate with anyone who could drag you down. I feel myself getting heated. Who the hell does this dick think he is? Would the fine gentleman like to stand up and show the rest of the class? There's some whispers and murmurs across the room all directed at us. I look in my peripheral. Diana has that, oh, I fucked up look on her face. Still, I stand up. With all due respect, sir. Which is much. I'm aware you're on tenure, but I don't think it's wise to force your job on your unemployed students. Or did you forget how much our tuition costs, along with giving a proper explanation of the frontal cortex? Gasps erupt from the rest of the class. I feel hot in the face, but I'm keeping cool. I can't say the same for our professor. I think he just snapped his new stick of chalk in two. I can see him squirm and find some kind of legal retort. Tenure or not, I'm pretty sure throwing shit at me is grounds for removal. Maybe not, but I'm not going to crack the likes of him. I shift my hand to my hip. I'm waiting, Professor. Now he's the one looking red in the face, more so out of anger. I bet that's the most blood flow he's gotten in quite a while. He grumbles something insulting under his breath before turning to angrily right with his now broken chalk. That's what I thought, asshole. I sit back down and take a deep breath. I'm not cut out for these kind of performances. That is Diana. You look at each other somewhat mortified before bursting out in laughter. It's thankfully covered by the bell. Help Diana gather her notes. She's a real knack for organised chaos. Gets that rubbed off on her as well. We make our way to the lecture hall, still laughing. I see you've been taking notes from Damien. Oh yeah? How so? Well, you're a pretty timid guy growing up. I remember having to beat you up with your bullies for you. To be fair, you're pretty good at Kung Fu. Oh, damn right. She sews off a standard kick. You have to admit, I wish I had her coordination. What's your point, though? Well, let's see. How long have you been dating Damien? Hmm. I think our first anniversary is coming up. Oh, wait, really? I need to plan something. Anyways. Wait, don't change the subject. Anyways, as I was saying, you were pretty quiet growing up. Sure, you kind of grew out of it a bit, but once you met him, you started getting, I don't know, more confident? What can I say? He's my better half. I give an exaggerated gay side at which Diana snorts. Ah, well, he certainly has left an impression on you. It's been around the star of the college basketball team will do that to you. Oh my god, stop. Someone's going to hear you. I try to shush her. She just covers another laugh with her hand. Guess you've got some more confidence to build. Besides, weren't you on the jumb Jumbotron together? <laughs> Guess you've got some more confidence to build. Besides, weren't you on the Jumbotron together at the end of the last game? I think I'm getting a phone call. Diana crosses her arms. I struggle to pull out my phone. She has a known expression on her face. I slide my phone on and hold it to my face. Hello? Oh, hey mom. Ah, uh, yeah. No, the school's going great. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. I'm still adjusting, but it's going okay. And then my phone actually starts ringing and vibrating in my hand, ruining my attempt at fooling Diana. Who am I kidding? Who'd be fooled by that? I think your phone is ringing. Uh, thank you for telling me. I'll be picking it up now. I give a slightly annoyed huff as I actually go to answer a phone call. It's from Damien. My face immediately brightens. Hello? Hey, sorry to call. We're about to head out for afternoon run. Didn't have time to text. I just wonder what we're still on for tomorrow night. No worries, and yeah, I'll make sure everything's ready. You make sure to drink plenty of water, okay? Okay, you got it, dude. See you at the cafeteria for dinner? You know it. 
Love you. Stay safe. I love you too. The exaggerated smooch demon makes is loud enough for Diana to hear. I almost cringe, but eventually do the same thing for him. I can hear him giggle before hanging up. I sigh happily as I stuff my phone in my pocket while turning my attention toward Diana. What? You guys are so cute. She's holding her cheek, gushing over it as she usually does. Stop. It's true, though. Ah, young love. Diana giggles again, and with that we continue our walk back to our dorms. So, what you got planned for tomorrow? Heh, it's a secret. Oh ho! Don't get any ideas. Oh, I would never. I roll my eyes at that, or again my phone out shows something to her. We're going to a show tomorrow. Ooh, exciting. Kind of surprised you're not into that kind of scene. I'm really not, but Damien was so excited that this band was coming to town, I couldn't say no. I pause. Also, I do want to get out of my comfort zone, even if just a little bit. I get you. What? You guys need a DD. It wouldn't hurt. You sure you wouldn't mind? Not at all. I got tomorrow off. I'll text Damien to let him know. Thanks, Diana. I appreciate it. Of course. We chat about this and that for a little while long before coming to the split between the dorms. They're not co-ed, so we don't actually live together. Oh, before I forget, do you want to visit the greenhouse this weekend? I don't know. I'll have to see how I'm feeling the next morning. You're not going to have a, day or a two day hangover. How about Sunday afternoon? I sigh through my nose. Can't get around it. I've been skimping out helping Diana the past few weekends while figuring out everything on this side of campus. I already hang with Damien Friday night, and I do owe her one now. It's really no excuse. Yeah, sure, I'll see you Sunday. Want to meet for lunch, then head over. It's a date, I'll see you then. Yeah, sounds good. We waved to each other as we walked down our respective paths home. As usual, I waved to the dorm mother. As usual, I skip the faulty elevator and take the stairs. As usual, I make my way home into my dorm room. I've only been here about a month, but at least I've got this routine down pat. Being in the master's program has its perks. I call it a dorm room, but it's almost like an apartment, complete with a kitchenette. What's best is if I have the place to myself. Well, mostly. Damien spends the night a lot, too. I toss my bag onto the couch before grabbing a glass of water, promptly chugging it. I'm not used to the summer heat around here. As I strip off my overshirt, I look toward the bathroom. Kind of want to take a shower right now, but I decided it was my usual time right before bed. I sleep better that way. I say that, but I'm gearing up for my afternoon nap without any distractions. I plug in my phone, briefly lighting up the pic of Damien holding me up from behind as I flail in his grasp. I smile at it for a flopping face first to my squishy pillow, not even bothering to pull over the blankets. It's still a bit too hot for that. My eyelids start to get heavy, and I fall asleep for my afternoon nap. a strange ringing in my head. It's quiet, but just loud enough that I can't ignore it. I'm having trouble opening my eyes. How long was I out? It almost feels like a headache, but it's concentrated only in the back. Lifting my arm is a struggle too. Wait, am I sitting? A groan escapes my dry throat. How long have I been sitting like this? With all of my might, I lift my hands up to my face and try to rub my eyes open with my palms. Wait, what is all of this I'm feeling? I pull it and it tugs at my scalp. It's my hair. I'm not loose enough to panic quite yet, or maybe I am and this is just a weird dream. In any case, after some more rubbing, I manage to crack my eyes open.
I'm sitting in an alleyway I've never seen before. I even moving my eyes to look around is a struggle at first. I just woke up right, I really feel exhausted. I take a few breaths, which is somewhat alarming. I thought you couldn't breathe in dreams. Regardless, little by little, I start moving while I can. I can wiggle my toes and move my arms. I kind of need to move them as my hair is getting in the way of my vision. I can hold my bangs down to nearly my sternum. The length isn't what's most concerning, though. It's the fact that my hair is almost an unnatural shade of white. That aside, I try to feel around. I'm up against a wall. My next goal is to try to stand up. My joints pop like mad. Seriously, how long have I been sitting here like this? It should not be this hard just to stand up when my knees are trembling. Nearly hugging the wall with my side, I manage to stand up, albeit quite hunched over. Something slides off of me, but before I can look down and see what it is, I start to stumble. A jerk a bit's wave of disorientation washes over me. My vision blurs. I can see stars. I feel dizzy and I can't keep my breathing steady. It doesn't hurt. Nothing does. Not even this sudden upcheck of stomach acid I fell out the ground below me. I clutch my stomach as I fall to my knees, breathing erratic. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. But I feel like it should. I'm more confused than scared. I don't have enough time to process what little information I have as I throw whatever is left in my stomach. It just smells like acid. And just like that, I'm back to sitting against the wall. I shut my eyes, but I can still see colours swirling around the inside of my eyelids. Without any strength, I just sit there and pant. The taste of stomach fluid still comes up from my throat with each breath, burning my mouth. I heave again, but nothing comes out this time, nothing but a guttural belch. Okay, okay, calm down, calm down. I say to myself, barely recognising my own voice. Not surprising, it feels like the only thing to wet my throat in decades was my own bile. I clutch my head to try and control the spinning I'm feeling. After several minutes of trying to breathe calmly, my vision starts to settle. I still feel disoriented, but I can at least make out what's in front of me now. Again, I look around, trying to get my bearings. As I noted earlier, I'm in some alleyway. I don't know where, though. Tilting my head up, I can see that it's night. The buildings around me seem to stretch taller than they should. I look further in front of me. There are boxes blocking the alley. They're stacked pretty high. I look down to the ground and something catches my eye. Slowly I bend over to reach over it, not wanting to upset my stomach any more, and grab what seems to be a jacket. It's pretty big. I can stretch out far past something that'd fit me. I wonder who left this here. Were they trying to cover me? Another headache hits the back of my head and I clutch the side of my face. Ugh, starting to feel nauseous again. I rest my head against the wall and immediately feel uncomfortable. It didn't hurt, but I could tell I shouldn't have done that. I reach for the back of my head. I feel bandages, and a lot of them. Along with what I can only assume is crusted up blood. How the hell did I end up like this? The last thing I remember was... Was... Hanging with Diana and making plans with Damien. I try to recollect more, as much as I can. It's all scattered, like a haze is blocking me from my own memories. Oh, fuck. I exhale with a haggard breath. I'm still hoping this is just a weird ring, because I can't even remember my own name. I then spend the next half hour alternating between doing breathing exercises and having an existential crisis. The more I think about myself, the more I realise I don't know who I am. I'm thinking clearly, there's not much to think about. All I know is Diana and Damien are very close to me, and I wish they were here right now. I feel a sort of sadness at all the things I can't remember. All of my relationships and experiences, just gone. One thing's for sure, this is no dream. 
Maybe it's a nightmare? If it was, it'd be the most boring nightmare I've ever had. I say that, but I'm still fairly spooked. I move past the notion that I'm dreaming, however. The sensations I felt since waking up are too real. Even so, periodically I pinch the skin of my forearm. I definitely feel I'm pinching the skin, but don't feel any pain. It's basically numb. Same with the back of my head. That blow I must have taken did a serious number on me. It doesn't take a doctor to figure out that's probably why I can't remember anything. Speaking of doctors, I replayed the memory of myself and Anna laughing at our professor. It's the only entertainment I have. Well, kind of. Also think back to that earlier memory. I've come to accept the fact that it was real. Despite the fact that my eyes were closed, it all felt so visceral to the point I can say it happened. Someone mentioned my loss of blood and someone else covered me up. Someone left me here, but who? All I had to go on is the jacket they left behind for me. It's simple enough, but I don't recognise the style. Not that I can talk about fashion. It's better than what I have on. I can't if I'm wearing hospital scrubs or a prison uniform. Wish at least I had some socks. The more I wake up, the more I realise how cold I am. A sigh. Eventually I look toward the other side of the alleyway. I don't think I could move those boxes easily if at all. I should at least try to look for help. I'm starting to get annoyed with my body as I still struggle to do the simplest of tasks. I can hear my panting echo softly through the alley, along with something else. The sound of footsteps. I try to hold my breath. I think someone's on the other side of those boxes. Do I call out to them? Do I hide? Not there's much room to hide. Whatever's out there starts pulling the boxes out one by one. I don't know what's in those boxes. They don't look easy to throw around. They're just chucking them like it's nothing. I can feel my knees start to tremble. A chill runs down my spine and my teeth start to chatter. Both my knees give and I'm back on my ass against the wall. The fear is starting to get overwhelming. My vision starts to blur again. There aren't many boxes left, and something starts to show between the cracks. A light. A flashlight. Before I know it, the ray of light is completely covering me. It's a task to lift my arms to block the beam, even harder to keep them in the air. I was already struggling to move without fearing for my life. I don't think I can take much more of this. I'm getting overstimulated. I feel like I'm shutting down. Just as I start to succumb to my panic, the light suddenly shifts. Slowly, I open my eyes, peeking through the cracks of my fingers. The person. No, the beastman holding the gun moves one step closer. Oh, don't move, he says in a gruff, commanding voice. If I was cold before, I'm frozen now. I'm just sitting here, trying to follow his movements the best I can with what little I can see. Through the slits of my fingers, I can ascertain one thing. He's a wolf, and a tall one at that. The wolf circles around me. I can see him clearly in my peripheral. You can see my face now along the terrified expression I'm wearing. Gun or not, he could rip me to shreds with just those claws. Not there's much to rip apart. I don't stand a chance at running in my current condition. Hell, I can barely stand up. So I sit here, waiting to see what he's going to do with me. He's a few feet away, gun still pointing at me. On closer inspection, it looks to be the size of a pistol. It doesn't look like any model I've ever seen. The wolf shifts his head, looking all over my body. My teeth start chattering again, reverberating through the alley. He walks up closer with intent. 
and shut my eyes. It's all I can do. This is the worst my breathing has been since I woke up. I can feel my empty stomach churn and my dehydrated eyes strain to tear up. The only thing that pulls me out from my panic attack is the feeling of something soft under my chin. He starts to slowly lift my head with his paw. Mm. His paw pads feel like worn leather under my chin. His breath is hot on my face. No more than ever, I wish this was just a dream. The wolf squints his eyes and speaks to me. I can't make it out as the ringing in my ears is too loud. Uh, is all I can muster. The wolf closes his eyes while pulling his hand away. He sits in front of me. We're eye level with each other. Right here. Oh, eh? Huh? He pauses once more before repeating himself again. Ah, you okay? I don't respond. I'm not in the right state of mind to. He seems to pick up on this. Oh, calm down, I'm not going to hurt you. The wolf places the gun he's holding on the ground and slides it the other side of the alley. See? If I wanted to, I would have already. That's one gun gone, or while but one on his back. My eyes veer to it, which he notices. Well, I'm not taking that one off. It'll be too much work. He states matter of fact before switching to a crisscross position. You're okay. You're okay. He looks me in the eyes again for holding his paws apart in front of me. Breathe in. He pulls them closer, almost in a clapping motion. And breathe out. I'm slowly transitioning from panic to confusion, which I'd say is an upgrade. For some reason the inflection in his voice sounds weird. He's speaking English undoubtedly, but something about it is off. I can't put my finger on it. Is it a dialect? Regardless, I do as he says and start to match my breathing with his movements. We do this for a while, and slowly but surely it seems to be working. With enough time and effort, with the help of this wolf, I bring myself out of my self-induced panic attack. After one final deep breath, I manage to get back to just breathing through my nose. I'm still breathing faster than I'd like to, but it's a start. Eh. Uh, how are you feeling? He takes a deep breath as well. I guess that did take longer than it needed to. I'm tired. I'm dizzy. I finally drop my hands down for a moment while moving to hold my head. Feels like I swapped a panic attack for a headache. No, I'm not surprised. The wolf gets closer to me, to my head. Wow, I really don't like how close he's getting. You have lost a lot of blood. He gently holds my chin and chips me a bit to the right, revealing the back of my head. He leans in closer and takes a few sniffs. I can feel his breath again and I start to get apprehensive. I instinctively pull back. Gentle or not, this really isn't helping with my anxiety. Are you still scared? Huh? He leans in again. I can feel the wetness of his nose on my forehead as he trails around my head while sniffing around some more. Uh, uh. Oh, sorry. The wolf says bluntly before he pulls back. Have it in mind. Uh, okay. Well, what's your name? He asks suddenly. I literally don't have an answer for him. I don't know. The wolf doesn't seem phased by that. Well, what do you know? Uh, I don't know. My emotions feel like a metronome, swapping between scared and confused at the drop of a dime. I'd like to believe he's right. If he wanted to hurt me, he would have already. Now that I think about it, I don't think he could hurt me either way, on account of not feeling any pain. Well, that's not true. He could break my legs, and even if I couldn't feel it, I'd, then I'd be at his mercy. That flash of imagery in my head makes me shudder. Oh, wait here. 
Huh? His voice snaps me out of my imagination. He stands up then moves near the alley entrance. I cock my head as I try to see what he's doing. The wolf waves a paw over his right wrist and the small screen lights up in front of him. Seems to be coming out of a bracelet he's wearing. I squint and try to make heads or tails of it. Seriously, where the hell am I? We certainly need to have this kind of tech back on Earth. Whatever he's doing, he's tapping furiously away on it with his fingers. For a moment he places his free paw over his chin. He looks deep in thought. All of a sudden he turns his attention back to me, looking me over once more for typing away again. He waits. Then I hear something. A notification? And he starts tapping again for about a minute before sliding the screen away. Okay, can you stand? I'm going to take you home now. Uh, here. The wolf walks up to me before starting to get me on my feet. He carefully gets into my armpits and lifts me up slowly, trying to keep me stable. How's that? Wait a minute. I stumble nearly to my knees and he catches me. Well, it's okay, I can carry if you want. I said wait! I raise my voice and the wolf's eyes widen a bit. I push him away, choosing to slump against the wall again. At least I'm still standing, even if barely. Who the hell are you? Where the hell am I? How do you know where I live? Even though my adrenaline from earlier has worn off, I'm starting to get hit with rising paranoia. I barely even know where I live. You can't just seriously expect someone with a head injury to go with someone they don't even know, do you? Hmm, quite feisty for someone with a head injury. The wolf sighs while walking over then sits down in front of me again, so I'm looking down at him. I'm kind of glad he did. My knees feel like they're about to give out and I sit back down on the ground. Well, I don't know how to explain it without alarming you, but you're going through a fairly common experience around here. And then taps the side of his head. Bar in the head injury. What do you mean? The wolf scratches the back of his head. Well, it's best you know as little as possible, unless absolutely necessary. That's a horrible way to build trust. I didn't mean to say that out loud, but I didn't mean it. Well, I don't need your trust. I could take you by force if you really want me to. The fur on his neck bristles and my fear spikes again. He flattens back down for rubbing the back of his neck. Relax. It won't come to that if you just cooperate. I'll say this. I've done this before many times. Then what? Taking humans home, amnesiac or not. How do you know where I live? The wolf pauses. Do you know where Asum is? No, should I? The wolf exhales, almost in relief. Whether or not you do doesn't matter to me. Rasum is one of the few cities that's mainly just humans around here. Okay, so where's around here? The wolf shakes his head. We can talk about that later. Honestly, we've died long enough. Just no left contacts there. He lifts his paw, pointing at that weird bracelet. I confirmed a meeting point to get you home safely. I open my mouth, which he interrupts. And before you ask any more questions, I gave a description of your appearance, and they match it up with someone who's missing. I close my mouth. I guess you have done this before. I'm kind of surprising myself. I'm taking all this in way too quickly, aren't I? I guess when your head is nearly empty, anything new becomes acceptable. Regardless, I'm going to at least try to remain sceptical. How do I know you're not just setting me up? The wolf smirks at that. You don't. What would you be able to do in your current situation if I was, though? He has a point. Don't know where or who I am. I wouldn't be able to make it far. I sigh. I can't tell if my ears are still ringing or if there are alarm bells going off in my head. I'll resign myself. I really don't have a choice. Okay, fine. It's not like I trust you, though. 
Well, that's wise. I won't do anything to hurt you, you can count on that. We'll see, I guess. With that out of the way, the exhaustion is starting to catch up. I scoot back to my familiar spot against the wall. I can barely stand up, let alone walk. Not to already impose, but you wouldn't happen to have any food or water, would you? The wolf thinks it over, before turning toward the alley, listening. Hmm, yeah. We could probably have a quick bite to eat. Let me just... He walks over the pile of crates and starts stacking them again, providing some decent coverage. Yeah, that should be fine. I don't know I'll go through the trouble to get through that. Besides you? Oh, fair enough. Actually, that does make me curious. Before the wolf sits down, he plops the bag he had slung on his shoulder onto the ground. Looks a bit weird, almost like a violin case with its angles straightened out. Like an awkward trapezoid. Wait, I'm getting distracted. So, how did you know I was here? Hmm? Oh. The wolf taps his snout with a couple of fingers. It was faint, but I could smell you a couple of blocks away. He pauses. Well, you have blood anyways. I see. Well, why do you go through the trouble of finding me? The wolf takes out what seems to be a canteen and places it in front of me, along with some kind of package wrapped in what feels like plastic. Afterwards, he moves to sit next to me against the wall. Oh, I take on a lot of odd jobs. I wasn't looking for you per se. I was just in the arrow and I caught your scent. He takes his own package, ripping it open. Some kind of food? You can sketch, consider yourself lucky. By the looks of it, you wouldn't have lasted another day or two. Looking over myself, I'd say he's right. I'm skin and bones, with an empty stomach and a concussion. Now that I think about it, I'm kind of surprised I made it this long. Slowly, I lean forward to pick up the canteen thing. I can feel liquid inside, but I don't see a way to use it. It's a rectangular shape with no discernible opening. Uh, hmm. Hmm, what? He looks up from whatever he's eating. There's water in here, right? How do I open it? He swallows. Oh. He leans over and slides his finger across the top. A small opening appears. There. It's got some nutrients in it that should help. Just drink it slow. Mmm. I do as I'm told. Maybe it's because I'm so dehydrated, but this water does taste pretty rich. It's almost heavy. I choke on it for a moment, but swallow it down soon, not wanting to waste any of it. I smack my lips a bit as if it's alcohol. Are you okay? Y yeah. Just a bit strong. Oh, just drink it slowly. I nod, a tad embarrassed my lack of coordination. Regardless, I'm thankful for the drink. My throat even starts to feel better in just a few minutes. Not wanting to drink it all myself, I mimic what he did earlier to close the canteen. Hmm. You know, on second thought. The wolf reaches over and takes the package he gave me. I'm just going to take a guess that, judging by how you reacted that water, you could use something a bit lighter to eat. He roamed his once again in his bag while handing me a small parcel. Well, that should be a bit lighter. It doesn't really taste like much, but it's got some protein. Curious, I reach over and pick it up. Feels like it's wrapped in paper, though there's no labels. With what little strength I have, I open it fairly easily. What's inside looks like saltine crackers, but brown instead of manila. I lift one up and smell it. It's like beef jerky, but only faintly. If I'm being honest, they don't look very appetising. Beggars can't be choosers, though. I take one of the cracker things and bite into it. Thankfully, he's right, it doesn't taste like much. A little salty and a bit sweet, but not much else. 
Definitely the texture of a cracker. I was glad I got something to drink. After a few minutes of eating, I look over to the wolf. He's enjoying his meal. At least I think he is. Man, how did I end up here? When I have time to think, I realise something. I don't recognise his voice from the ones I heard before. I decide to speak up about this. Oh, right. I think there were people who left me here, but I can't really remember. Oh, looks over to me with a curious look. Do you remember anything about them? Uh, no, not really. Just a little bit of conversation, probably right where I got this dent in my head. I pat the crumbs off my shirt and hold out the jacket I woke up with. I have this, but that's it. The wolf looks it over, for he grabs it from my hands and smells it. He then scrunches his nose. I guess he didn't like how it smelled, so he balls it up and tosses it to the side. Well, I think it would be best to leave it here. Take my word. Oh, okay. I start to think to myself. Whoever left that for me, I think they had my best interests in mind. Their voice seemed reassuring, at least. Oh, to be fair, they did leave me here like this. I should be more careful. A voice isn't left to judge a character. Oh, wait. What's your name? He had such a shaky start, I completely forgot to ask. My name? Hmm. He pauses, then sighs. Uh, uh, Cooper, just don't tell anyone. Why? You ask a lot of questions, you know that? To be fair, you're making it hard not to. Well, just eat your food. Okay. Once again I do as I'm told, sit in this strange alley of this strange beast man eating this strange food. I wonder, how would Damien react to this situation if he were with me? Betty tried to carry me so we could get as far from this place as possible. A fragment flashes through my mind of Damien giving me a piggyback ride. I think he convinced me to play basketball with him and he whooped my butt. I remember being tired, just not as much as I am now. I sigh. I really miss his piggyback rides. I don't think this Rasoon place is my home. It's not much, but I have some memories of where I lived. Oh? Hmm, I just don't know what to make, how to make sense of all of this. Well, I'm not surprised. I just know one thing. I really want to go home. Well, as far as I'm aware, Rasoom is your home. He pauses. Even if it's not, Rasoom is known for getting people back to where they belong. What do you mean? Well, Rasoom is a hotspot for humans. Almost a sanctuary. Well, I'm sure they could get you back to wherever you came from. I hope so. Cooper flicks his ear at that. I guess you can sense my dejection, though I'm not really hiding it. Where do you come from? Uh, nowhere worth mentioning. He dodges my question and stands up, listening intently. Oh, I think it's time we head out. How are you doing? Uh, well, better. I don't think I'm in any condition to move around too much. Uh, can you walk? I grunt as I try to stand up. It wasn't much that combination of water and protein crackers at least give me enough strength to stand and walk a bit. Kind of. I don't think it's for very far or long. Oh, I'll take breaks. If it comes to it, I can carry you. Okay. I stretch, popping all my joints again. This time it feels really good. Just glad to be off my butt for a bit. Well, I should mention it. When we're out of the alley, it'd be best to keep talking to a minimum. Why? Cooper stands shifts, looking towards the opening of the alley, then back at me. There are people trying to find you as we speak. And that's bad? Very. I can't disclose much, but I'll say this. Your life will be a living hell if they find you. 
Maybe it's just because I'm getting more lucid, but I'm not really phased by that. That kind of worries me. So wait, are you under contract? Well, in a sense. As I've said, I've done a lot of escort missions. It tends to be easier the less people know. Doesn't sound skeevy or anything. Cooper looks out of the alley and then back at me. Look, there's a lot out there, and with your current mental state, I don't think it'd be a good idea to overwhelm you. Maybe. I don't know. I close my eyes for a moment to take a deep breath. Being left in the dark ain't much better. we will all be fine. I'm sure you've been through worse. Wouldn't know. Cooper actually chuckles at that before returning his gaze to the alleyway opening. Hmm, got to do this in a way it's not suspicious. I think I'll leave that to you. I didn't really offer. Fair enough. After about five minutes, he manages to remove most of the boxes fairly quietly. We're free to leave the alley. I'm both nervous and excited. You said we shouldn't talk, right? Only if absolutely necessary. Whisper if you need to, I'll probably hear it. Why? Um, can we write? Do you have an axiom? A what? I'll take that as a no. He points to his bracelet. I can communicate through this via text, but that's it. What about pen and paper? Cooper looks at me if I said something truly bizarre. Well, I don't know how to write like that. Wait, what? I didn't use them much outside of class, but at least I know how. Uh, okay. You do? Weird. What the? Like you all want to talk? I think to myself, grumbling. Oh, right. Looks me over again. I'm slowly getting used to that. Oh, what should I call you? Huh? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. The thought I crossed my mind. What do I call myself? Cooper pauses again, thinking. Well, until you come up with something, I'll just call you human. Okay. Before we officially venture out, we do a bit of cleaning in the alley. Cooper tells me he should try to avoid leaving anything behind, sans that jacket he tossed. Thankfully, there's not much. Just the wrappings from our food and... Oh. I forgot Cooper's other gun. It definitely needs a trouble he left something like that lying around. I'm about to try and pick it up, I think to myself. Is it a good idea to touch something like this? Hey, Cooper, you left your gun over here. Is it okay for me to pick it up? Oh, good call. Yeah, the safety's on. Just trying to slide anything on it. Slide anything? On a gun? Okay, I know my motor skills are a bit rusty, but I should be able to pick up a gun without firing it, right? I gulp. I'm hovering my hand over it, inches away before a yellow arm invades my vision. Relax, you're not going to set it off. The wolf casually picks it up and even twirls it. See? Hmm, if you say so. Here. Yeah. Cooper then carefully takes my arm and plants the pistol into my hand. It's cool to the touch, and smooth. Almost feels like a smartphone screen. My grip is firm on it, I don't want to drop it. Still, I do turn it around slowly, getting a decent look at it. It looks cool. It's not where I'd normally picture a gun to look like, though. It's sleek and pretty light. However, it's still a gun, I don't trust myself with it. It's, uh, neat. Here, take it back. Cooper takes it and holsters it back at his hip. I guess giving you a self-defense weapon is out of the question. Would that be necessary? When your position, yes. Why does whoever they are want me so bad? Well, classified. Figures. You ready to head out? As ready as I'll ever be. He takes out his bracelet or axiom and starts to tap away at it. 
Now I'm close, I can kind of make out what he's doing. The screen is pretty clear, even while being somewhat translucent. Can't make out a lot, though. It looks blurry. Honestly, I've censored. You can read that. Oh, I can, you can't. He swipes away the screen. No offence, but I'm not going to register you in it. Uh, okay. Whatever that means. We're going to head to a nearby plaza. It's late, there should be a shop open. For what? I figured you could use a change of clothes. He grimaces. Well, I just got paid. You don't have to do anything, I'll manage. Well, that's nice of you, human, but it's more of a necessity. Your current getter would be suspicious just about anyone. I look down at what I'm wearing. He has a point. Although I'm not sure what kind of fashion they have here. If I could choose, probably something with sleeves. The scars on my arms and legs are kind of off-putting, especially to me. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, I'm not the person to ask about clothes. We'll figure out when we get there. Okay. We both look over the alley, making sure it's empty enough. Alright, let's start moving. Take on my sleeve or something if you need anything. And remember, keep quiet. Okay. With that, we make our way out of the alley. It's hard to tell what time it is, but I guess it's after midnight. There's no one out on the streets besides a few cars. Some flying cars at that. Okay, yeah, uh, maybe Cooper was onto something about the scary outside world. What's more is they're fairly quiet, just a slight hum. We walk on the sidewalk. The material is somewhat warm against my bare feet. Can't tell what it's made out of. It feels weird. I really wish I had some shoes. Cooper walks along the street, giving me somewhat close to the walls of the nearby buildings. Their walls look sleek and unnaturally smooth. If I had to guess, they look like the same material as that gun Cooper has. The surfaces just look like big phone screens, highly reflective. I don't look long though, not wanting to see my face. We make it a block or two for I took at Cooper's sleeve. Cooper pokes his ear in my direction. I whisper as quietly as I can. Sorry, break? Ah, oh, sure. I lean against the wall behind me, taking a few breaths. I was hoping I'd last longer. The fact is the middle of the night doesn't help. I'm feeling pretty sleepy. Yeah, that should help. Before I can ask, he takes out his axiom. And he draws a circle on the screen. As he does, the outline of a circle lights up on the ground. With another tap, Cooper slides the axiom off. And a cylinder rises in the ground, stopping it around my calf. Cooper must see my stunned expression. What's the matter, old man? Never been to the city before? At this point, I don't know if I'm more stunned at what he just did, or what he just called me. Old man? I'm like 26! I spit out in a hiss. I was in a human that young with hair that old. And keep it down, would you? He's like I'm mature as I call him out for provoking me like that. I stare at him, sticking my tongue out. I huff and sit down on my new seat. It's not very big, but it's enough for me to sit fully on it without sliding off. It's warm, almost like a heated seat. Curiously, I glide my hand along the side. It's almost soft, in that worn, plasticky kind of way. Handy. Cooper rests against the building while I take my break. He's tapping away his axiom again. Tried to look at it some more. Didn't see some pictures, I think, but that's about it. Looking around, there's not much to talk about in terms of architecture. Most buildings look the same, being eerily rectangular with that much detail. The ones that don't look a bit older, but not in terms of architecture. Never seen this style, they just look more worn out than the rest. Cooper keeps near up with a few cars that come our way, but he doesn't seem too worried. Or even the ones a few stories above us. 
kind of scary seeing stuff like flying cars all of a sudden. I instantly think about a scenario where one, one malfunctions and just falls straight on me. Ever the pessimist. I shake my head and stand up. Turning to Cooper, I give him the thumbs up. He gives me a puzzled look for doing it back. Or be the tad weird. Does he even know what that means? This no talking thing isn't going to work. I sigh for a gesture for him to lead the way. Thankfully, he understands that and we're walking along again. Once again, I start to think to myself. I've come to accept that I'll be doing that a lot now. Seriously, this place is huge. It's a wonder how people don't get lost around here. There are signs here and there, with all the buildings looking so similar, how do they make sense of it all? My thoughts get interrupted as Cooper suddenly pulls me into a nearby alley. What? Shh. He covers my mouth abruptly and huddles me against the wall. Furrow my brows. Where did this come from? Oh fuck, did he see one of those guards? I can't see anything out of the alley. Cooper is resting on his side now, blocking me. Pulls me in against his chest. My scrawny chest against his built one. This is the closest we've been. With this poor cover in my mouth, I can only breathe through my nose. I never noticed it before, but this dog absolutely reeks. My eyes almost water. His musk is so overpowering. The guards don't get me the stench will. Actually, no. Guards, please come around the corner. Save me. They don't as much as I sort of wanted them to. I don't see them, but I hear the clamping of boots behind Cooper. When they stop, my heart drops. They pick up again after a few moments, their steps fade into the distance. When Cooper removes his paw from my mouth, I take in some fresh air as I move a few steps away from him. I glare at him and whisper in a hoarse voice. Road. Oh, sorry, they're getting close. They're not the only ones. I actually spit on the ground, get as much of his musk out of my system as possible. You need a bath. Huh? Come on, let's go. You'd think with a nose that good he'd have noticed. I don't even give him time to process that as I pull him out of the alley. Ugh. My bravado ceases quickly, though, as I need him to actually lead me. We don't talk for the rest of the walk, and thankfully no other guards pop up. After another few blocks, Cooper points to a building. It's one of the only ones with a lit sign. It looks like neon. Uh, that's our place. I huff. Thank God, my, la- my legs were starting to give out again. What is it? Well, a clothing store, I think. You think? Well, I've never been. It's just recommended on the Axiom. By who? Well, let's go. Okay. We cross the street quickly. Well, as quickly as I can. It isn't until we're up against the building I finally realise what's been so off-putting about this city. There don't be any doors on most, if any, of the surrounding buildings. This building has some see-through windows above, but here at the ground? Nothing. It just looks like a big wall of plastic. How do we get in? Oh, hang on. He pushes me out of the way for taking out the axiom, this time drawing more of an archway on the screen. While he's doing so, an outline in the shape of what he's drawing appears on the wall in front of us. Once it connects, as the brief flash of light from a new doorway has appeared. Oh, wait here. I have to open one for you. I can't go through yours? No. Don't worry, I'll just take a minute. Uh... Before I can protest, Cooper heads into the boutique and the doorway shuts behind him almost instantly. It hasn't even been a minute, but the fact I'm alone out in this strange world had given me goosebumps. I rub my arms a bit, really feeling the lack of sleeves. I wonder why I can't feel pain, but I can feel all of this. At least my feet are warm. These heated walkways are nice. I look around some, and I think I see a clock in the distance. 2.46am. 
No wonder I'm so tired. I yawn and rest against the wall. It's cool compared to the floor, which is weird to say the least. Man, Cooper's taking a long time in there. I start to get worried. Looking at the clock, it's been several minutes. It's a door. I mean, it's a super futuristic kind of door, but it shouldn't take this long to open a door, should it? I'm starting to get antsy out here. I'm a sitting duck. I turn to face the wall and start to feel around for pushing. Surely there has to be other ways to open the door around here, right? What if you don't have an axiom? This all seems ludicrous to me. As I'm feeling around, the outline of an archway lights up. Before I know it, I'm falling face first into the boutique. I yelp and close my eyes, bracing myself for a plethora of broken bones. Instead, I fall into something sturdy and supportive. And smelly. I look up and I'm met with Cooper's concerned expression. I fall onto his chest. Cooper's gaze shifts quickly, though, back to one of annoyance. What are you doing? I was trying to find a way and you were taking too long. Well, you want to get off? More than you know. I heave, I basically try to do a push-up to get off him, but my piddly arms make it difficult. Cooper instead just slowly lifts me up from my collar, like a kitten held by the mother, and gets me off. I can't believe you survived this long. I don't have retort. It is admittedly a bit embarrassing to fall face first into your escort like that. I just grumble to myself on work on standing up. Oh my heavens, are you alright? I whip my head around to all the unfamiliar voice. My heart starts to race. Cooper places a hand on my shoulder. Oh, calm down, she's the one running the place. He says with some exhaustion as he hoists me up to stand properly. That's right. Just let me know if you need anything and I'll be there to assist you. She jumps. Oh my gosh, your head. Are you okay? Do you need a doctor? Oh. Right, I'm bandaged up. Before I can respond, Cooper speaks up. Oh, he's fine. He just had too much to drink. He then pulls on my cheek a bit, just scolding me. He needs a fresh set of clothes. Oh, I see, see. Well, of course. Just let me know if you need anything. I'll be there. Lickety split. Uh, thanks. Her energy is a bit overwhelming, but I nod respectfully to water out of habit. She looks like a small sheep, maybe no more than four foot tall. Her outfit looks like a green bellhop's uniform, complete with a cute and small hat. Before she walks back to her desk, I catch her name tag. It looks expensive with the name Marantha written in gold lettering. Fancy to say the least. No good of a name like that, though. I wonder if it's a local thing. Okay, enough gawking. My inner monologue is once again interrupted by my escort who lightly slaps my back. Hey, what was that for? You're taking up time again. Go find something to wear, something cheap. I rub my back and for a moment I think I feel something. Ugh, I'm just tired. I'm aware, now hurry up. He then scoots me off further into the stall he rests against the wall, filling with his axiom. Wow, thanks for the help. I want to go to sleep, in a real bed. In any case, I start to wander around the store. Everything looks pretty tacky, to say the least. Lots of weird designs, and most of them don't look very practical. Shiver. These floors aren't heated. Looking around, I don't see any shoes. If I remember correctly, which is already a stretch, most clothing stores don't hold shoes due to the beast men needing specific shapes and sizes. Guess it's not unreasonable for them not to have any. Regardless, I walk up to Marantha's desk. This might be easier than wandering alone. Plus, Cooper would get mad at me if I dawdled. As I walk up to her desk, I realise something. I think she's asleep. Um, excuse me, uh, Miss Marantha? I get close to her and, yep, she's asleep. She even has a pillow on her desk. I look around some sort of bell to wake her up. I feel bad, but I do want to get out of here as soon as possible. Some kind of cube thing next to her nameplate. I tap the cube and sure enough it produces a small ding, instantly waking her. 
Hello, oh, uh, hello, sir. Did I fall asleep again? Uh, hello, and, uh, yeah, I guess you did. Oh, dear me, I do apologise for that. I hope you won't wait in long. Her voice sounds like if a stuffed animal sheep came to life. She's adorable. It's no trouble at all, ma'am. I'm sorry for waking you. Oh, look at you being so considerate. If everyone around here was like you, this job would be heaven. She hops down from her chair to greet me. Definitely a couple of feet shorter than me. I think you need some help deciding. Oh, yes, I uh, need some advice. I'm not looking for anything... I pause. Uh, extravagant. Oh, and here I thought we had some of the more tame selections around these parts. I guess I'll explain to your accent. She laughs, but I freeze. Oh, fuck, this must be why Cooper told me to keep quiet. It could pick me up from a crowd just by talking. Uh, where are you from, sir? She almost trills as she walks me along the selections. Uh, do I lie? Do I tell the truth? V Vermont? She tilts ahead of me, smiley expression and fading. Oh, wow. What? Never heard of the place. What province is it in? Uh, hey, what's that? Hmm? Oh, that's by designer. Phew. Yeah, this is going to be an issue. I have to talk to Cooper about how to handle these kind of situations. I let her chatter on. It's honestly just pleasant to hear her talk. She asks about my taste and what I'm looking for. After I give her the rundown, she claps her hooved hands. Oh, that explains why you thought we merely had extravagant stuff. You're looking for something minimalist. Uh, sure. I just nod. I don't really think of clothes as some sort of art. She can help me get what I want, that's all I care about. In that case, I think something over here would be perfect. In spite of short legs, she's speedy. I don't have to jog to catch up to her, she only wears me up more. These were designed by a relatively new designer. He's still up and coming, so I'm sure he'd appreciate your business. I look over and, yeah, they seem pretty standard to me. Just how I like it. After a few minutes of peruse and I pick out a few outfits. They have tags on them, but I can't tell what currency they're in. I think I can make up some sort of stylized P, but that's it. It's on to break the bank for Cooper. I think these should be fine. Is there anywhere to try them on? Oh, certainly. Follow me, please. I nod again. Her enthusiasm at this time of night is impressive. She scurries off to another wall and holds out her wrist. Huh, she has an axiom too. Hers looks different, cuter than Cooper's. She draws a rectangle on a pink screen and the door appears on the wall. Here you are, sir. The dressing room. It also has a bathroom if you want to freshen up. When you're to leave, just hit the button on the table. Do you have any questions? I think I'm okay, but thank you for all your help. I really appreciate it. Oh, aren't you just the sweetest? I'll just holler if you need me. With that, she scurries back to her desk. I'm so tired I can only muster a half wave to her. She's very nice. I look toward the opening and head in. It's dark for a moment for a harsh pinkish hue illuminates the area. I have to shield my eyes, dropping my clothes. Sensing discomfort. The lights then tone down drastically, the point of just softly revealing everything. Is this your satisfaction, customer? Uh, sure, I guess. I don't even question it at this point. Very well, enjoy your stay. Creepy. I scoop up the clothes and walk around slowly. It's pretty spacious for a dressing room. This place is freaking huge. Who needs this much space to get dressed? There's what seems to be a vanity along with a large mirror framed in neon lighting. Still far away enough for it's dawning on me. I have to get a good look at myself. Why am I so nervous? How bad can it be? My arms and legs are anything to go by. Pretty bad. Okay, that's enough. I'm still me, whoever that is. I say that, but I close my eyes as I get closer to the table. 
After I feel around to find a place to put the clothes down, I open my eyes. Wow, my hair really is long. I stroke it again, really getting a feel for the length. Doesn't look like I've eaten much in a long time either. I'm not withering away, but I definitely can see a lot of bones. My cheekbones in particular are fairly pronounced, along with the pasty complexion. Yes, I don't get much sun either. This sudden confrontation with my own reflection just makes my mind wander. Where have I been and with who? I can feel another panic attack coming I stand up straight. We can panic later. I need to get used to this. What I become. I take a deep breath and start preparing myself for what's next. What's my chest look like? I clutch the bottom of my shirt, although I hesitate for a moment, I decide to just pull the thing off. For a moment I look away from the mirror where I glance. Then look fully. Wow. I'm not sure if I'm disgusted or just plain shocked. My ribs are easy, easily showing along with several stitch cards throughout my chest. Trail my fingers over a few of them, which makes me shudder. I didn't really realise that my hands are pretty cold. I repeat my new mantra. How the hell did I end up like this? I stare at the reflection in the mirror for a while longer. The only thing I can recognise are my green eyes. I remember Damon used to compliment them all the time. Eventually I slap myself out of it. It's weird as I look, we don't have a lot of time. I'll get used to it, sooner or later. I turn and that's when I met with the weirdest part of my body. Along my spine are several pieces of metal. They look like ports. I'm not very flexible right now, but I managed to get my arm around to feel one of them. I push into one and immediately feel a wave of nausea, almost falling over. And some sort of flash, a bright light. Along with a feeling of tightness around my limbs. Fuck, my face was hard enough, that's not something I'm going to get used to easily. I shake myself to my stupor and just rush to get my clothes on. Not wanting to look at what the mirror is showing me anymore. Thankfully, it doesn't take long for me to figure out an outfit. It's a black turtleneck and dark pants. Can't tell what they're made of, though. The turtleneck is light, but I already feel like I'm warming up. The pants almost feel like jeans, but smoother with fabric than ever felt before. Probably best not to think about it. As long as they're functional, that's all I care about. I'm ready to leave, so I push the button thing on the table. It takes about a minute for the door to open. I wonder if she fell asleep again. <laughs> Don't blame her. I'm surprised they have anyone working this late at night. I gathered up all the extra clothes in one arm, my old scrubs in the other. I try to compose myself, still disturbed by what I've become. And on that line, we're going to leave it for this episode. That's quite a lot for our main character to take in, and for us. What is going on with him? What's happened? I trust we'll find out in future episodes because I'm a little behind on uh, this VN, so right now I don't know where things are going. Well, apart from a few more things which I have read, I have to get caught up with it before long. That is it for Remember the Flowers Part 1 and for the February videos, March 1st, Tuesday. And uh, we'll be starting off all being well. Uh, March with the finale of Backbone, and hope to get that finished up. And then we have a few more things planned. Uh, I'll be going back to Echo of, nine, of 2015. Carry on with Carl's roots. Hopefully we'll have some more Far Beyond the World. I know Kale has a lot on his mind with current situation at the moment. So we'll see what happens there and when that comes out. And also definitely more Minotaur Hotel will be along. We need to catch up with Asteria on there. So that's a rough guide to what we might see next month. And as always, thanks to all my donors on Patreon and Kofi. And I'm starting to sound like Jago has it now. Hmm. I should tell him that. But I always mention my uh, 
top tier patrons Chris, Evan King, David Taylor, Samutu, Ryan Hall, Anubis Silverwind, Ile Corval, Brandon Bradford, Astian, Lark Huskerton, Gunnar Muller, Tiger Cup, Cindy Dragonwolf, Dissonance, Besuksu, Cobus Visser, Kartek, Burnt Toast, Jewel, and Popot. Yeah, thanks to all the people who help support the channel, not only through the money but through the views. And especially you, if you're still listening to me right now. <laughs> so that is it. So have a good time of day. Until next time, bye for now. <laughs>